open class. Happy Wednesday. We are today continuing our chapter 16 discussion of acids and bases, but today we are going to be now talking about the weak acid and weak, bake, weak base case. We on Monday talked about how to calculate pH and how pH in aqueous solution is so inherently linked to the solvent of our solutions being water. We're going to keep that in the back of our minds. We're going to keep the uh, newly introduced KW being equal to H plus times OH minus. Uh, we're going to keep that in the back of our minds uh, as we continue to move forward and discuss now the balance of acids and bases uh, in their weak form contributing to the concentration of H plus and OH minus in solution. So what sets weak acids and weak bases apart from strong acids and strong bases is that they partially dissociate in solution. So a weak acid, and we're going to talk about this case of A, weak acids partially dissociate in solution. So these are going to be uh, species that react with water reversibly. This uh, can be generically represented by this equation represented below where we have some weak acid, actually I'll just do this, weak acid, HA, uh, being dissolved into water, which is a liquid in form. What again sets apart aqueous from liquid is that aqueous implies that something, whatever the species is, is dissolved in water. So the water cannot be dissolved in itself, hence why the phase here is a liquid. Uh, but when HA comes into contact with water, it is going to break into A minus, and the H plus is going to move over to the H2O. So that's going to give us an H3O plus concentrate, or uh, H3O plus in aqueous solution. Now, since this reaction is reversible, because again, this is, is a or this is a weak acid that we are looking at we can write some type of equilibrium expression. Equilibrium expression to represent the balance of products to reactants in this solution. The new special Kc that we're going to be working with is known as a Ka. This is the equilibrium constant that is going to be uh, the expression for a weak acid in solution. Uh, so much like the KSP or the KW case, there's no special math, it's just a simple label change. Ka now is going to represent the equilibrium constant expression for a weak acid in solution. And we can see that we are taking the products here, the A minus and the H3O plus, they are in the numerator as they have been for any equilibrium expression. And our weak acid is the only reactant that we are including in the denominator since it is the only reactant that is in the aqueous phase. So we can use this equilibrium expression to perform any of the calculations uh, that we would want to do surrounding some type of weak acid as it exists in solution. We are not going to forget though the concept of pH that we introduced on Monday and that oftentimes uh, our concentration of H3O plus is going to be measured at equilibrium through some type of pH measurement. Uh, and we can use that to our advantage uh, when it comes to filling out our ice table or filling out, uh, you know, the equilibrium table, however you've been referring to it, which will give us information about the solution as it exists physically sitting in some type of beaker in front of us. A 5.9 times 10 to the negative third molar monoprotic acid, monoprotic, meaning that there is only one H plus, and the structure that we can see generically is here, so it's a little ha molecule. It is dissolved in water and allowed to reach equilibrium with that water. The pH is then found to be 5.63. What's the equilibrium constant for this reaction? Now this type of problem, fundamentally, we will be setting up very similarly to the uh, problem that we, or when we solved for the KW, the equilibrium constant for water, we used the, the pH to find equilibrium concentrations. We're gonna do the same thing here. The only difference is that we also have an initial concentration that is presented to us. Uh, we have to include the reactant in our equilibrium expression. So that's gonna add one degree of difficulty, but not too much more difficulty. 
right? So just like with any of our previous equilibrium expressions, we're going to set up uh, what our reversible reaction is. So we have HA, this is aqueous, it is in water, which is a liquid, reacting reversibly to give us A minus aqueous and H3O plus aqueous. We can set up our ice table, equilibrium change, or ice initial change in equilibrium. Initially, we are told that there is a 5.9 times 10 to the negative third molar monoprotic acid that is dissolved in water. Before it reaches equilibrium, this is the concentration, the 5.9 times 10 to the negative three. So we are going to have to really be reading into these problems to figure out where exactly in this table does the information go. Since we are told this is the concentration before equilibrium is reached, we will assume that this is an initial condition. Water, just like before, it's a liquid. We are looking at a heterogeneous equilibria. We don't have to include the water. Uh, the concentration of our A- and our H3O+, plus. initially we are not told any information. We are only told that we are adding HA into water, and that is reaching equilibrium, meaning that we do not have any A- minus or H3O+, plus initially present. This information we can use to tell us which direction the reaction has to shift in order to reach equilibrium. We are going to see a dissociation of reactants into products, meaning that we are going to shift away from the monoprotic acid and uh, in order to create some of our product here. At equilibrium, then, we would expect to see 5.9 times 10 to the third or 10 to the negative third minus x for a concentration, uh, as well as x and x for both of our products. From here, we are now supposed to find what our equilibrium constant Ka is equal to. Let's write this over here. Ka, which is equal to the concentration of A minus times H3O plus, all divided by concentration of HA. This expression was on the previous slide, but you would also be able to write it for whatever your reversible reaction is, assuming you know what your weak acid is and you know what species it dissolves into. Again, we're always looking at product divided by reactant concentrations. We know that our reactant uh, concentration is going to be lost a little bit. We're going to generate some product. This is going to give us x squared all divided by 5.9 times 10 to the negative 3 minus x. But here we can see that we have no known Ka. We don't know initially what our x's are equal to, so it's like, how do we solve for K? Well, just like with that previous problem, when we solved for Kw, we used the pH, we can do that here. The pH there tells us the concentration of H3O plus when we are at equilibrium, right? The pH is then found then meaning after equilibrium has been reached. So we can solve for the H3O plus concentration since this is going to be equal to 10 to the negative pH. The H3O plus concentration then will be equal to 10 to the negative 5.63, which is equal to 2.34 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. This is going to be what our x value is equal to, right? Since at equilibrium, the concentration for H3O plus is x and the, uh, like in the table, and we just also found for what that concentration is, meaning that this is our x, not just in the H3O case or H3O plus case, but also the A minus and also the amount that is going to be lost from the reactant, right? Again, x is x is x. It's all the same x. So we can use this concentration now in the numerator and in the denominator of our equilibrium expression for our weak acid in order to find what the Ka numerically is equal to. This is going to be a 2.34 times 10 to the negative 6 molar squared all divided by 5.9 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 2.34 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, and what this is going to be equal to then is a 9.28 times 10 to the negative 10 unitless value, right? In our balance of product to reactant, this very small Ka tells us that we have a lot of reactants still left 
and not a lot of respective product. This is what defines our acid in this case, again, as being a weak acid. We do not have a complete dissociation. In fact, we have a very small dissociation, but this dissociation is not so small that it's incredibly insignificant, right? We still saw a pH change from the neutral pH of water. We saw this change down to a pH of 5.63. So even though we have a very small dissociation, this dissociation is not completely negligible. We can't just ignore it altogether since we have fundamentally changed the nature of the beaker of alleged water sitting in front of us. So the weak acids and weak bases that we're about to also uh, showcase, we are gonna have to be working with these types of calculations from the ice perspective. Okay, before moving on to weak bases though, it's going to also be important to define uh, what we call percent dissociation. This is also known as percent ionization or degree of dissociation or degree of ionization. All four of these words get kind of mixed and matched. So percent uh, or degree, get mixed and matched, ionization and dissociation get mixed and matched, but all of them mean the same thing, which is uh, the percentage of a substance that has ionized in solution. The way that we calculate this, we can see the equation below, the percent dissociation or the degree of ionization or the percent of ionization, you get the picture. The percent dissociation is going to be equal to the concentration of our H plus at equilibrium divided by the concentration of our HA initially, right? So this uh, is going to be very similar to a, uh, or to the language that we used before in like chapters eight, chapters nine, when we were talking about percent yield. The only difference is that now we are not looking at some type of theoretical yield, right? We're not going entirely from reactant to product. We're going partially from reactant to product. So I'm going to put quotes around this percent yield because it's not actually a percent yield. The equation looks different because we're not comparing what we should have gotten to what we actually got. We're comparing what we get at equilibrium on the product side compared to what we started with on the reactant side, right? So amount of product compared to initial amount of reactant. And all of this because it is a percent will be times or multiplied by 100. All right, so let's look at this in action. Let's calculate what the percent dissociation of that hypothetical monoprotic acid was in the previous example problem. All right, so we had that weak acid, it broke apart in solution, and what our ice table looked like, because being able to see the ice table is actually going to be a really nice example in this case of like where we're kind of looking to gather this information. We have eight minus and the H3O plus I C E. Water don't care about again, all liquid doesn't matter. The H A we started with a concentration of that 5.9 times 10 to the negative third. And regardless as to what the rest of the table was, this H3O plus concentration at equilibrium we found by the measure of the pH was equal to 2.34 times 10 to the negative six. Both of these are in units of molar. These are the values that we are going to be comparing to one another. Uh, percent dissociation with reversible reactions is a way to say, okay, I started with this amount of reactant and it turned into this amount of product once equilibrium was reached. So our percent dissociation is equal to our concentration here, finally, which is the 2.34 times 10 to the negative six, all divided by what we started with initially, the 5.9 times 10 to the negative three. Both of these are in molar. We're gonna multiply that by 100. So the percent association, once we you know, take one number divided by the other, multiply 100, is going to be equal to 0.040%. What this tells us is information that we already gathered from the equilibrium constant, our Ka. We don't get a lot of product in this reversible reaction. Most of the HA is going to remain as HA and not dissociate. But now we have a different way to represent that uh, 
you know, that conclusion using a percent instead of uh, a seemingly more arbitrary Ka value. All right, so as we move into weak bases, we can also calculate percent dissociation for weak bases. Similarly, we're going to, going to be comparing the amount of product at equilibrium divided by the amount of reactant initially. So that concept uh, or that setup for the equation is going to be the exact same. So what is a weak base and how can we talk about it similarly or in parallel to the weak acid cases? Well, a weak base is something that's going to also re react with water reversibly, but now we are going to cause some type of OH- to, uh, to come about. Our base in the generic notation is going to be represented by this B, B for base. It will interact with water reversibly, water again being a liquid here. Everything else is aqueous because everything else is dissolved inside of the water. Now the base is going to pull one of the H pluses to it, and that will result in an HB plus. This plus sign uh, results from the H that the base pulled to it having a positive, uh, positive characteristic to it. This is also going to leave OH minus behind. The KB is again, another form of an equilibrium constant. This is another type of KC. A KC, when it comes to weak bases, we notate with this lowercase b here, meaning a weak base is what we are looking at. But the setup to find this is again the exact same as every other equilibrium constant that we found so far. We're looking at a ratio of products divided by reactant. The products here are the HB plus and the OH minus, and the reactant we started with was the weak base itself, B. So I know we have so many different Ks now. We have Kc, we have Kp, we have Ksp, we have Ka, we have Kb. Where does it end? There are so many Ks. The important thing to remember, the underlying thread that connects every one of these Ks is that all of them are equilibrium constants. They are all set up in the exact same way. So if you have a reversible reaction, you're going to be taking product divided by reactant of anything that is in the aqueous or gaseous phase. That is it. So even though we keep introducing these new uh, contexts for using equilibrium constants and we have more subscripts, just remember that the subscript, its purpose is just to give you more information about the reaction you are working with. In this case, if you were to pull up a KB because you have written an expression that matches an equilibrium constant, you thought it was just a, a pure KC and you find out it's a KB, you're like, oh, you're right, this equation is basic. I am working with a weak base. That's all the subscript is meant to do is to give you more information about the problem. So please try not to get too thrown off by it. It's always products divided by reactants. So let's look at how the setup for this problem when we're working with a weak base, like yes, now we're working with a KB, but we're still setting up this type of problem in the exact same way as every other type of equilibrium problem that we have worked with so far. The only additional pieces are that we are now told that we are working with a weak base and we are ultimately trying to find a pH. What is the pH of a 0.85 molar aqueous methylamine solution? where methylamine is CH3 NH2. We are also told what its KB is equal to here. Okay, so how we start this problem, we are not given any type of reversible reaction. So dating back to last semester, chapter eight, when we started writing reactions, that's going to be the first thing we have to do. We're working with some type of equilibrium, some type of weak base. We need to know what the reaction is before we write any type of equilibrium expression. So we're told we have a base here. Uh, it is explicitly not said in the problem that it's a base, but again, we are told that we have a KB. This KB lets us know that the CH3NH2 is a base. So even if you didn't have this header up here, right, the pH of a weak base, if that wasn't there, if it was just the wording presented as it is, you would still be able to identify that the CH3NH2 is a weak base because you're working with the KB. So that's the usefulness of these subscripts. The CH3NH2 aqueous, as it interacts with water, and we are not told uh, or we are told, sorry, that we are working with an aqueous solution, so we know that water as a liquid is going to be present. 
these two things will react following the structure of the generic formula previously given, that one of these hydrogens is going to move to our base, giving us CH3, NH3. The base now will have a plus sign associated with it since it has taken an H plus onto itself. This will be aqueous. And the remainder of the water as this hydrogen moves over is going to be an OH minus. And this will also be aqueous. So yes, we were not given an equation, but we have the logic and tools now to write out whatever this generic equation is going to be, whether or not we're working with a base like here or an acid. So as the H plus has moved over, we now have a reversible reaction. We have some type of KB and we are asked to find what the pH for this uh, solution is going to be. Now, in order to find pH, let's kind of backtrack. We need to know concentration of H plus at equilibrium. That is the important piece. pH, again, is always measured at equilibrium unless explicitly stated otherwise. So we are going to be uh, needing to find an H plus at equilibrium here. Well, since we're not working with an acid and we don't have an H plus given in our generic equation, right, there is no, no H plus here, we're going to end up needing to find concentration of OH minus to find concentration of H plus to find the pH. So we have plenty of steps inside of this problem and a number of equations and tools at our disposal to solve it. So the first thing we're going to have to solve for to set up and solve for is the equilibrium concentration of OH minus. This is something that we know how to do since we have a reversible reaction and we have the ice table format at our disposal. We are uh, told what the initial concentration of our solution is, 0 0.85 molar Na or CH3NH2, before any type of dissociation happens. Water, don't care about it. We don't have any of our product initially present, the reactant still needs to dissociate. We have only just added this 0.85 molar uh, concentration of our reactant into solution. It needs to shift from reactant to product. This reaction needs to shift in order to create some of this uh, product now. We would use this to be able to predict that we're going to be shifting from reactant to product and use this information 0.85 minus x x and x in order to find what the uh, concentration is going to be equal to. Now we can see that we are not asked for all of the equilibrium concentrations here. Ultimately, we're trying to find a pH, which means we have to find concentration of H+, plus, which means we have to <laughs> find concentration of OH-, minus, which is exactly equal to our value of x. In other words, once we find x, we can start this immediate thread on our way to find the pH of our solution. All right, so let's set up to solve for our x. Uh, we have our equilibrium expression that we can set up since we have a Kb. Kb is going to be equal to the concentration of our CH3, NH3+, plus, all times the concentration of our OH-, minus, all divided by the concentration of the CH3, NH2. All right, and as we then start inserting some values into this equilibrium expression, the CH3 NH3 plus as well as the OH minus is equal to X, or KB is equal to X squared in the numerator. And what I'm gonna do here is take one of our shortcuts. So the initial concentration uh, of our reactant is over a thousand times greater than what the equilibrium constant is equal to. Uh, what this means is that I'm going to effectively drop this minus x here. I'm only going to include the 0 0.85 present down below. Uh, and I'm sure in some of the other problems that we've worked through in the past two days, you could have taken a shortcut, but I also like to show out some of the explicit math on the way so you can get practice with that. In other words, there are plenty of cases where you doing your homework, for instance, are able to take a shortcut. I like to show the explicit math since I'm trying to cover all my bases here and show you guys everything, like how, uh, uh, how everything all connects together. All right, so I'm taking a shortcut here though and I'm being explicitly clear about taking a shortcut. Uh, and all of this now is gonna be equal to, the, to our KB, which is equal to 4.4 times 10 to the negative four. 
Now to rearrange and solve for x, x being the thing that we care about here, at least initially, our x is going to be equal to a 0 0.0193 uh, molar. So this is equal to our concentration of our OH minus at equilibrium. This we can use to find what the concentration of H plus is equal to. How can we do this? Well, remember back to Monday when we talked about how, since we are working in, uh, in an aqueous solution, if we have some OH minus present, we have to have water, or, um, some H plus present because of the nature of H2O breaking down reversibly into H plus and OH minus. And since our solvent is water, this is happening all around the solute. The balance of the H plus and the OH minus concentration is dictated by our Kw, which is equal to H plus times OH minus. Now we know what the OH minus concentration is. It's the 0 0.0193 molar. So let's insert that up here, 0 0.0193. Our H plus is what we don't know. And so we're going to have to solve uh, using or solve for that using our Kw, which is equal to 10 to the negative 14. All right, so what this means is when we rearrange and solve for our H plus, we are going to find a value that is equal to 5.18 times 10 to the negative 13 molar. I'm sorry that my math is now kind of like circling everywhere on the slide. Uh, and this is again a 13, not a 15, just to be really clear with my script. Uh, and again, on Monday, we talked about the inherent balance of H plus and OH minus in solution, that as we stray away from the equality of 10 to the negative seven molar for both, uh, if we increase one, we have to decrease the other. And that is exactly what we see here. We're working with a basic solution, so we have a value that is an OH concentration greater than 10 to the negative 7, which means that our H plus concentration has to be less than 10 to the negative 7. And 5.18 times 10 to the negative 13 is definitely less than 10 to the negative 7. This is the value we can use now to insert and uh, calculate, solve for our pH. Since pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H+, plus, our pH is e are going to be equal to the negative log of the 5.18 times 10 to the negative 13, which is going to be equal to 12.29. This pH is greater than a pH of 7, which uh, would imply a basic solution. And that is exactly what we would expect since we are working with uh, calculating the pH of a weak base in solution. So all of this is coming full circle. Now, had you gone about solving for the pH in a slightly different way, after solving for the OH minus concentration, if you went the route of finding the pOH and using that to solve for the pH, you could definitely have done that you would have ended up with the same answer, a 12.29 being the measured pH of your weak base. Okay, so we've introduced a ton of new stuff in the past few days. We've introduced the nature of water dictating the acid-base balance inside of solution. We talked about the strength of an acid and a base. Strong acids uh, and strong bases were kind of implied on Monday, uh, where I told you to go back and review the information from chapter nine last semester. If you were not here last semester, the information in chapter nine is still very useful to you. Here now we have uh, explicitly shown that when working with weak acids and weak bases, we can use the equilibrium constant uh, expression in order to find any type of information we're looking for, so long as you have the right pieces. We can find pH, uh, we can find concentration, we can find a Ka or a Kb, all of these pieces are going to be inherently linked. And it can definitely uh, be easy to get lost in the math. So definitely just, uh, can you use the word definitely enough? Definitely lay out a roadmap if you need to, kind of like how we did here from working your way backwards. Uh, where we had started the problem, we said we're trying to find pH. Well, in order to find pH, we need concentration of H+, meaning that we needed concentration of OH- given the context of this problem. 
Um, so be critically thinking, be laying out your work as clearly as you possibly can. Give yourself your uh, explicit steps to follow because most of these problems will be multi-step problems. So for as in detail as we went on Monday, today we're only going to uh, introduce two new uh, you know, concepts that we're tying in. We're only going to introduce the weak acids and the weak bases today, because even though we're only introducing weak acids and weak bases, as could be seen by the nature of the problems that we worked through in today's lecture, there are many different approaches we can take to solving for these types uh, or solving these types of problems. We might be looking for pH, we might be looking for concentration, we might be looking for an equilibrium constant, but if you have the information at your disposal, like ice tables and reversible reactions, you can solve for those problems. It just is going to take time. So we're going to call it here for the day. When we come back together on Friday, we are going to uh, talk about acids and bases in solution interacting together, which will transition us into chapter 17, neutralization reactions. For now though, again, we're going to call it uh, homework corresponding to the uh, lessons introduced here will be due on Friday. And uh, that is going to be it for the day. So I hope you have a good one. Get some rest. Stay safe, everyone. And class dismissed.